Hello, and thank you for tuning in to today's tarot reading. I almost made this into an April Fool's video by publishing a completely ridiculous reading, just misrepresenting all of the messages and essentially effing up the whole thing as a joke. But then I kind of thought, knowing YouTube, somebody won't get it and then it'll tarnish my reputation as a reader or possibly backfire in my attempt to expose the cult of the fraud who calls himself Nithyananda. So I decided no April Fool's jokes, just a nice little reading video for today. It'll be a pick a card reading similar to previous months, but I wanted to do a brief introduction first to explain how today's video is a little different I've had some requests to go into romance and relationships as a topic for these pick a card videos. So if you're interested in your love life and in understanding maybe what relationship you're in or what kind of a relationship you're attracting or manifesting or possibly bringing to a conclusion, then hopefully some answers will come through for you in the reading today. However, I want to give a little warning beforehand that I'm using a few decks that are completely new to me. I'm still learning this as an area of cartomancy. Like I've, I've done all kinds of life path readings and career readings, but I haven't actually done a relationship reading online ever. I've only done these in person back when I read cards at the Tarot Room in Vancouver. So basically, if you pick a pile and the messages are not resonating with you, don't feel in any way whatsoever that you're supposed to figure out how your life fits the cards. Take only what resonates, leave everything else. Consider this a fun little experiment video. And if it is accurate, let me know in a comment. I would love to hear that. Or if you'd prefer, I go back to my readings of energies in a more general sense or checking in with life path in a more general way once a month. Let me know that as well. I appreciate the feedback. Now, I'm actually making this intro after already filming the reading, so I'm going to try not to spoil it. But I will say there were some fairly specific messages that came out. And so what that means is I do feel like one of you or maybe a few of you will pick a card and it's going to be uncannily accurate. And so I'm feeling like maybe some people have a more strongly vested interest in understanding this area of life than others. And so if you're watching and you feel like, holy crap, this is exactly what I'm going through, then you're welcome. It's pretty much a private reading for you that just happened to go public. And if you're watching and only some of the messages resonate and others don't, then it's very possible that some of those messages came through specifically meant for you and others came through specifically meant for other people. So confession time, I have been kind of addicted lately to watching videos made by other YouTube tarot readers. I've been really enjoying readings by Soul Whispers and, oh, what's her name? Julissa, Julissa's Manifestations. She just has such a fun energy and it comes through in her videos. And as kind of a tarot oracle nerd, I am always fascinated to learn new decks and see the art presented in the form of cards and to just kind of explore new energies through these kinds of readings. So I hope you enjoy this different sort of a reading video. And if you want further messages, if you feel like you pick your pile and the messages are all resonating with you, but you want to know a little bit more, I did make an extension just for Patreons, just for patrons over on Patreon. And so for as little as like, whatever, like $3 a month or $4 a month, I think is the first tier. 
every month when I do a reading video, you also get a bonus extension on Patreon. And for those who have gone for a higher tier on Patreon, paying $10 a month US or more, they also get a private reading every month as part of the Patreon perks. And those will be published in the next day or two. So I would say by like the 3rd of April. And yeah, it's, it's, I think it's a good deal because the private readings on Wizio start at, I think $75 Canadian per reading. So for $10 a month, you get one reading every month. It's just 15 minutes, just an energy check-in. And if you have a specific question that you would like the reading to be answering, you're welcome to send that as a message in Patreon if you opt in for one of those higher tiers. So that said, before we get into the actual reading, if you're even still watching this, all the jewelry I'm wearing today on my neck comes from my Etsy shop, The Art of Gems. And I decided to put on some stones that are love stones, especially the Kunzite and Chara White, which is for the heart chakra and the crown, some turquoise and blue topaz for the throat, some turquoise and lapis lazuli for the throat and the third eye. And this three strand choker is actually one long 36 inch necklace that I've kind of wrapped around as a choker. And it's made with purple fluorite as well as ametrine because ametrine came up in one of your readings on Patreon. So I felt like putting it on to honor that energy. The link to my Wizio readings and Patreon and Etsy are all in the video description below. And if you decide to buy something from my Etsy shop and you mention this video, I will send for you as a gift. The first person who mentions it will get the turquoise minimalist ring that I've worn throughout this video. Oops, I'm trying to hold it up in a way that the camera picks it up. Aren't these fun? I got these little turquoise heishi beads that are just minimalistic and beautiful and bright and I feel like in springtime they just add the right little pop of color to our outfit. I should point out I'm also wearing the bracelet that I just made for Etsy with this fun little tassel. I'm loving the boho fashion style lately as you can maybe tell from my jewelry designs but just thought I would shout that out since that's my main job, is making jewelry and selling it on Etsy. And if you appreciate my videos, if you enjoy my content, I really appreciate the support if you feel, you know, called to throw me some business and buy yourself some jewelry, I will always throw in a special gift. So first person to mention this video gets the turquoise ring as well as the usual free gift with purchase. Now we'll get into the reading. I just want to first introduce one last thing. The Lover's Oracle, which is a new deck I've been working with, where each card has a different illustration, a different painting. I think they are just so beautiful. I might start using these cards in other videos coming up in the future. Let me know. Uh, but before I get into the specific pick of cards, I'm thinking just for fun, Let's ask for one card for the collective. So if you don't want the full romance reading, or if you do and you want just one bonus message first, I'm asking existence, which is a card from this deck that will suit all of us at this point in time. And the card that I've picked says, Emotions are a natural and necessary part of life, but they can also distort your perception and cloud your vision. In order to see things clearly, you must let go of resentment. So that's an interesting message for the collective, letting go of resentment. And man, I wasn't even going to get into this topic, but I feel like emotions and letting go of resentment and not acting from a space of agitation is so topical right now with concern to the Oscar slap. Like I said, I wasn't going to go here, but oh man, I was actually watching the Oscars on Sunday night. I was at my mom's house. We were just having a light, casual, fun night when 
all of a sudden, somebody who I've respected since I was a little kid and looked up to since my days of watching Fresh Prince of Bel-Air was having a full-on public emotional breakdown, screaming at a comedian who I've admired and laughed with since I was a kid. And it was just so triggering for me. And my mom said, you know, that's a perfect example of why we should never impulsively act when we're in a space of emotional agitation. And she's right, like poor Will Smith is gonna be stuck for the rest of his life knowing that the night he won Best Actor was tarnished by what he did. Um, okay, I'm not gonna get into all of that. It's just an interesting message that and this comes up for all of us collectively right now after that incident. Emotions are a necessary part of life but can distort your perception and cloud your vision. So yeah, we don't always get the full picture if we're acting only from emotion and not also tempering it with wisdom, with intelligence, with maybe weighing the pros and cons of a situation before we jump up and take action. So I hope you enjoyed that little sneak preview of this oracle deck. Man, all the dirtiest pictures are coming up when I'm trying. Some of them are clean, I promise. But yeah, that there's your little sneak preview. I've babbled on enough. Go ahead and pick your pile. I hope you have fun with the reading and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye for now. Hello and welcome to the very first ever romance and relationships reading here on my YouTube channel. So since I started doing these monthly pick a pile or pick a pendant talisman tarot readings, I've had a few requests to get into the realm of relationships. And so if this is something that you're curious about, this video is definitely for you. If you're not interested in having a physical partner or marriage or boyfriend, girlfriend, relationship of any kind, you might want to pick a pile and watch anyway, but simply apply the messages as they relate to your life in general, because each one of us is here to love first and foremost ourselves. And then if we choose to expand the love that we have, in a way that radiates outward and reaches the heart of somebody else, then great. But if not, there might still be some messages here regarding self-love and connections in general. You know, love isn't just about sexuality. Love can also be about sharing the space with family, with friends, with coworkers, classmates, people in general. So with that said, we have pile one, pile two, and pile three. The talisman I chose for pile one is angelite with a little hand-sculpted bead that I made myself. And of course, as always, these talismans are all available in my Etsy shop. Pile two is the love charm with rhodonite, pink lapidolite, and rose quartz. And pile three is a special self-healed quartz crystal. It's a Himalayan diamond with a tiny little amethyst accent. So take a moment, choose the talisman that resonates most with you, and the link to the videos will be in the description box below. I'm sorry, the link to the specific piles. All right, so if you chose pile one, this is the romance reading for you. We'll start with a little description about the talisman that you were drawn to. Angelite is this beautiful powdery blue gem on the top of the pendant, and crystal healers associate it with angelic communication, connecting to higher guides, connecting really to 
all the spiritual, mystical realms that we sometimes feel a yearning to reach when we're experiencing our human lives. So whether you call that spirit guides, angels, starseed family, whatever word you want to put to it, Angel Light helps us open our throat chakra in such a way that we can communicate and express ourselves in a way that reaches those higher planes of existence. And this is not only just a one-sided communication, it's also the kind of communion that allows us to tune in and receive the messages we are meant to receive. Now, if you're somebody really spiritual and you believe in this, that's wonderful. If you're not somebody who believes in this kind of stuff, if you think more atheistically, like all of this is just a fantasy, that's fine too. I personally don't really care whether crystals and gemstones work as an actual energy. For me personally, I believe that they do, but I don't think you have to believe that in order to benefit from a talismanic property. There's a lot to be said about the placebo effect and sometimes believing that something will give us a benefit actually becomes beneficial. So I don't want anybody to feel alienated or like you have to believe in this in order for it to work for you. You can also just pick things that you like aesthetically, gems and crystals that you think are pretty and use them as a symbol of increasing your ability to communicate and increasing your ability to receive wisdom and receive messages from others. And so that's angelite. And the little sculpted component on this piece is just a thing that I made out of gold clay that is meant to kind of look like a pile of stones. And to me, that symbolizes the beautiful earthworks that we see in all kinds of different mystical landscapes around the world. So like the stone mounds in the landscape of sacred England, piles of rocks that form the hills of South India. When we connect with stones and we feel the ancient history within them, that helps us connect more deeply to our ancestors, to our roots, and to remaining grounded. So the pile of stones representing Earth and the angelite representing the celestial realm, and to me it makes for a combination that is equally elevating and also grounding. Now you may have noticed that with each of the piles I had a little heart-shaped stack of cards. These are Let's see, the Love Oracle. It's a very new deck for me, so I had to turn around and read the package. I'll get to this as your message from the beloved or from whether this is your current partner or your next partner. We'll take this kind of as the romance oracle message for the end of the reading. I'll set that aside for now and start with the tarot. So if you're one of my regular viewers, you'll notice this is a new deck for my channel. Usually I work with the Osho Zen Tarot, but I've been really drawn to the more traditional decks lately. You know what? I almost forgot to cleanse the cards with the singing bowl first. So as I play the singing bowl, I'm setting the intention that whatever messages those who chose pile one are meant to receive come through in today's reading. Let's both take a deep breath in and slowly exhale. Now as I get into your cards today, as I'm shuffling, if there is a specific person you have in mind for today's reading, I'd like you to just think of that person, request your guides, request also that their higher guidance gives you the energetic permission to hear about your connection today. Whenever we're doing a reading that involves another person, I feel like it's important to not only connect with your guides, but also with their guides. So ask their guides to help you form that connection. 
And these are bigger cards than my hands are used to shuffling. This card wants to come out. If you don't have a specific person in mind, that's fine too. You can either set the intention that you'll be hearing about your romantic journey in general, your self-love journey in general, or the next partner you're meant to experience. And I know this sounds kind of vague, but bear with me. It's my first time on YouTube doing a romance reading. I've done these in person before when I worked at the Tarot Room in Vancouver. But of course, it's much different when we're doing a group energy. So I would really appreciate your feedback if you find this resonates with you. All right. So we're going to look at present, past, and future. And that's in the outer world. And then we're going to look at present, past, and future in the inner world. All right, so first thing, I'm seeing that there is some obstacle regarding physical enjoyment of romance in your life. We'll start with the present moment cards. The Seven of Cups reversed and the Ace of Pentacles card reversed. These are both positive energy cards representing finding that space of equilibrium and trust and inner peace, as well as a new opportunity or a new chance at abundance and prosperity. Now, when both of these cards are reversed, it shows that you have a desire to share the blessings that you've received in life with somebody else. And you also have a feeling that it would be great to have a new beginning and to start on a new path. However, the reversals are showing this hasn't manifested yet, and it almost feels like there's a stuck energy or a blockage. Now, if we look to the past, the Knight of Wands right side up in the outer world shows a tendency to really rush into romances, bring all your energy, be very passionate. The Knight of Wands is a very masculine energy card. So if you are feminine and you're watching this, it shows that you were swept off your feet once upon a time in a previous relationship. And that kind of like wands blazing, wands representing the capacity to manifest you had somebody come into your life and make you feel like they were everything you were looking for. And perhaps at that time, in that place, in your outer world experience, they were. However, in your inner space, the Six of Cups was reversed. Now, I want to look at this for a moment because I feel like it describes the relationship path that you're on in a nutshell. I should have mentioned earlier, the outer world cards represent your physical experience. The inner world cards represent your emotional space with relation to it. When we see the Six of Cups in the Star Tarot, we see these two little characters riding a unicorn, kind of jumping over the sun, over these three blooming, beautiful flowers. Now, it's the only card in the entire deck that references twin flames. The creator of the deck described these two little etheric twins as being a representation of divine masculine energy and divine feminine energy. And the fact that the flowers blooming here are rising out of the dirt, but they are untouched by that negativity. You know, in fact, there are lotuses, which are known symbolically as purity in the form of a flower because they grow out of a mud pond, but never actually hold the dirt. They just whisk it off of their petals. What this card represents is beyond everything in the earthly realm, a yearning for a divine love that's more than just it's physicality, that's something more than just what you see, what you touch, what you're told, 
what society tells you it should be. When we see this card reversed in the inner space, it shows that what you were hoping for, yearning for, anticipating, maybe even manifesting was a higher level love connection. And so with that in mind, when you charged into a relationship full force, fully enthusiastic, with that intention to manifest, you were ignoring some of the red flags that let you know the partnership wasn't everything you wished for it to be. And so it shows a tendency to kind of see in the other person what you want the reality to be rather than what the reality actually is. And what that's led to in the romantic space in the present moment is this disappointment and this sort of wondering if you should restart. And whether that's starting again, but with a new level of clarity regarding a past connection, or whether that's starting again with somebody entirely new, that would be for you to decide. But what the cards themselves are showing is that the level of purity and spiritual yearning you had in your inner space was not actually reflected by the experience in the outer world. Now, the future you're moving into, if this trajectory is continued, meaning if nothing has changed, if you keep going as you've been going, the Four of Wands reversed and the Six of Wands reversed, now, wands again being the cards of manifestation. What we see in the four of wands, these two curious little bear cubs climbing these abundant fruit trees, it represents reaping the rewards for your efforts, having manifested something. And we also see kind of an 11 11 with the two tree trunks here, each forming what looks like a one into this gateway or this bridge. When you look at it symbolically, it really is a new journey or a new path. If you see, there's a little road leading into these beautiful, mystical, snow-capped mountains. There's a shining sun. There are sunflowers and fruits. It's really a beautiful energy. But the reversal shows something that's not really being attained. Something that's like a goal, but it's an unrealized goal. And in the inner world, the Six of Wands being very reflective of the past reverse Six of Cups. Again, there's six flowers. Again, there is an individual riding kind of a mystical creature into the stars. Only this time, instead of two twins riding a unicorn, it's one powerful individual creating a star or painting a star. What I see this referring to is that in your past, romantically, you were striving to find somebody else, another embodied person, in order to complete the energetic disparity that you were feeling within, kind of yearning for that soulmate connection, twin flame connection, ideal romance connection. Whereas in the future, what you're looking towards is to become the most perfected or you know, I don't mean to use the word perfect, which can be triggering to those who are perfectionists and always feel unfulfilled. What I should say is becoming your highest possibility, becoming your highest version of self. And so I do see a lot of maturing happening regarding your goals and what you are seeking to awaken in your romantic life. It's like moving from a past where you would jump into any relationship the moment it presents itself with an expectation that that other person will fulfill you, moving into a future where there is a possibility for a great romance here, but the reversal is showing that you're not going to go in blind. You are going to weigh your options, weigh your pros and cons, see how it makes you feel, and maybe even plan for the long term. Because the little bears are bear cubs here, if you've set the goal to start a family or if you've considered really settling down, the cards are showing that option is available to you if you choose it. At this point in time, the way to make that into a reality, if it's a reality you choose, 
is to become practical and grounded in all the options that you're making and in the new beginning. And I do want to rectify this reversal here because I feel that when we become the best possible version of ourselves, whoever we are meant to attract in our life will naturally become available. They will present themselves. If we are living from a fear-based place, if we are trying to get into just any relationship so that we're not stuck being alone, the kind of people we're going to call in will not be as respectful of us as they should be. They will feel that neediness and possibly take advantage of it. And that's what a lot of spiritual readers refer to as a karmic connection. It's like your baggage attracts their baggage or your unfulfilled feelings Seek fulfillment in somebody else whose unfulfilled feelings are seeking fulfillment in you. It's a codependency. And instead, if we focus on manifesting the best possible self that we can be, the best possible realization of our goals and our creative expressions and our abundance, when we're really feeling great about who we are, we're looking for somebody else to share that greatness with, not to create that greatness for us. So there's the generals. Take it how it resonates with you. And the card that wanted to jump out while I was shuffling, the Wheel of Fortune. So how cool. Finally, there's a major arcana card after seeing a lot of these minor arcana energies. The Wheel of Fortune refers to fate and something that is meant to be. It's interesting how this is one of the few cards in the deck where there's a chorus of angels kind of singing reality into being, and the talisman you picked was angelite. So if you do feel like a connection to the angelic realm is something important to you, this card is showing a confirmation of that, that your angelic guides are available and they specifically want to help you in the realm of romance and relationships, including your relationship with self and your relationship with spirit. Now, the Wheel of Fortune card, it refers to fate and destiny, something that's preordained, predestined. The fact that it was reversed shows that there's not one set specific path that you have to take. Your options are completely open to you at this point in time. I'm feeling that you are not currently in a long-term committed relationship. If you are, you may consider looking at the other two card options, the other two talismans. Maybe there's another pile that will be more resonant with your specific experience. But if you are single or if you are as yet to manifest the relationship that you're looking for. What this card is telling you is that you can relax a little bit about who they're going to be, how they're going to present in your life, and what you're going to do when you find them. There's absolutely no rush, no need to put any pressure on yourself. Forget all the stuff about biological ticking and enjoy the path and really trust that you are becoming who you're meant to be and as a natural result of that if you choose to draw in a relationship it will be with someone who reflects that positive self-discovery now the card from the lover's oracle that i pre-selected for pile one gives the message life is a series of constantly shifting cycles when we resist change, we resist the natural flow of life and create unnecessary stress. Go with the flow. You will be surprised where it leads. I don't think I could have asked for a more perfect oracle to represent the Wheel of Fortune energy reversed. So yeah, go with the flow. Don't resist change. Trust yourself. Trust your intuition about people. You've had enough past experience to kind of learn 
what you don't want a relationship to be. You've kind of learned if it seems too good to be true at the beginning, not necessarily that you have to keep yourself guarded, but keep yourself aware of the difference between what somebody says and what they may be feeling. I'm also going to pull a card for you from the Soul Connections Oracle. Guilt. Don't let guilt get in the way of happiness. Okay, so if you feel like you made a mistake rushing too forcefully into a past relationship, expecting more than it delivered, and if you feel let down by your past choices, let go of that guilt. Remember that what you did in the past was based on what you understood of life and love in that moment. And it's not necessarily going to condition your future. Going for another card from this oracle. Commitment. Commitment is an important factor to achieve a successful relationship. And so if you've been burned in the past, this card is letting you know don't have a fear of committing in the future. Not everyone is going to turn out to be less than what you expect. And I feel again the key to that is the Six of Wands here, manifesting yourself as you want to be, so that who you draw in will also be a reflection of their highest possibility. And if you're already in a relationship, it's also a message that as you raise yourself, you can also raise your partner. It doesn't have to be outgrowing the other. It can also be growing with and inspiring each other. And the last card from this oracle, admire. It's time to think of everything that you admire in your partner and in yourself. It's like positive reinforcement. When you see the best in each other, you inspire each other to be the best that you can be. And the last card I'm going to pull for today will be from the Romance Angels Oracle. I'm asking the higher guidance of those who chose pile one and the higher guidance of the partner, if there is a partner for pile one, what is the message from the Romance Angels Oracle? New love. A new person has stirred your romantic feelings. So again, this is a confirmation of the Ace of Pentacles message, which is a new opportunity, something totally unexpected that will spark your abundance in the area of romance, possibly even changing up your financial position, your career, your work, your creativity. New possibilities is the main message for, for you at this point in time. I hope you enjoyed this reading. And I would definitely appreciate your feedback. Let me know whether or not it resonates. Like I said, I'm kind of new to doing the romantic messages in readings, but I hope you enjoyed this. And if there's a specific area in the life that you're curious about and you don't want a group reading, you want something more personally just for you, check out the video description. I've put a link to my link tree where you can find my Etsy shop for the talismans that I make, as well as my Wizio page where you can request a personal reading. Thank you so much and I hope you have a wonderful month of April and a positive experience in your love life. Much love and we'll see you in the next video. Bye for now. And hello to those who chose Pile 2. This is your romance reading. Before I get into the messages on your cards, the talisman that you chose combines rhodonite, pink lapidolite, and rose quartz. So rose quartz, it's in a heart shape. It is definitely one of the quintessential heart chakra gems. It's used by crystal healers to sweeten relationships when we are in relationships. That doesn't just mean 
romantic sexual partners. It also refers to your family, your friendships, your co-workers, all the people and animals with whom you share your life. Pink Lapidolite is also a love stone and relates more to self-love, how we care for ourselves, how you put yourself first in order to overcome anxiety, whether this be social anxiety, frustration, fears of commitments, fears of expressing yourself. Anytime somebody is struggling with anxiety or with a feeling of not being good enough, I always recommend pink lapidolite because it can be seen sort of like a self-esteem stone. And then rhodonite, once again, a heart chakra gem. The soft pink energy helps to heal heartbreak and overcome difficulties in the area of romance. So by choosing this talisman, which has the most heart chakra gems of the three talismans available today, for sure love is on your mind. And I really hope that today's reading will bring through some messages that are meant for you. Now, if you are in a relationship or if there's a specific person you have in mind with whom you're hoping to spark a romance or continue a romance, I'd like you to think of that individual as I play the singing bowl to cleanse the cards from the energies from pile one. If you are single and choose to remain single, meaning you're not interested at all in romance, don't worry, there could still be messages here regarding your relationship with self, which is the most important relationship because that is the foundation for all of our connections in life. So I'll play the singing bowl now. Take a deep breath in, exhale slowly, and together we'll set the intention that whatever messages are meant for you, will come through in today's romance reading. I'm requesting the blessings from the higher guides of all those who chose pile two, as well as the romantic partners or the future partners of those who chose this pile so that clarity can be brought to the romantic situation. So holding that intention that whatever messages are meant to come through will come through. I'm going to shuffle the cards. You'll notice that I'm working with a different deck than my usual. This is called the Star Tarot. I used to work almost exclusively with the Osho Zen but have felt really called to explore the more traditional decks. All right, we're going to look at the cards on the top of the deck as your outer world cards and the bottom of the deck as the inner world. We have present, past, and future. present, past, and future. So we'll start in the present moment with the Outer World card, which is Princess of Cups. Now the Cups energy in this deck is the energy of love and of emotion. The Princess of Cups we see here is holding this beautiful glowing chalice towards the night sky. She's crowned by the waxing moon, which means she's reaching to a higher possibility in her life. And we see a beautiful pair of dolphins on the bottom, which gives us a nod to romance, to love. When this card is here in the outer world position, in the present moment, it shows that if you are in a relationship, you are so loving and so loved. You are seen as 
the fulfillment of your partner's wishes. You are really what they were hoping for. And if you're single, you're a catch. Like you are the kind of person other people wish that they could have a relationship with. Now the inner world card is the Prince of Wands reversed, which shows you don't really see how awesome you are. And pile two, you are an awesome individual. If you're a girl, you're an amazing woman. If you're a guy, you're a really cool guy. The inner world space being reversed while the outer world space is right side up is showing that a lot of the validation in your life is coming from other people telling you how great you are and that the obstacle at this point is to recognize that within yourself. The Prince of Wands is somebody who is capable to manifest what he wants. And energetically, I'm talking about our inner masculine if we are female or just yourself if you're male. Being able to recognize what you want in life and go for it with the power of the lion and the magic of the unicorn. The wands are the the suit of creation and of magic. And so this card being in the inner space shows that inwardly you have a spiritual depth while outwardly you have a very strong emotional expression. And being able to draw on your spiritual manifestation capacity while using all of your love and your charm in the outer world, you will be unstoppable. Now in the past position, we see the Three of Cups right side up in the inner world, which shows you have a very strong bond with people. This isn't exclusively a romance card. It's a love card, but it's showing a powerful group of friends or a group of sisters who are bonding together in a shared ceremony. And so the same way you have this inner magic, but you're not really tapping into it at present, you have tapped into it in your younger years, in your childhood and in your youth. And it's showing that you have a strong family connection, a strong ancestral connection, and that there's a very beautiful purpose for you spiritually when you do connect with your ancestors, with your roots, and with your emotional connection to family. The Five of Swords reversed in the outer space of the past, the outer world, is showing that you have experienced heartbreak, but you've also overcome that heartbreak. The five swords piercing the heart show challenges, throw, show breakups, and they show struggles. You may have also experienced in your childhood seeing the breakup of family members, whether that be your parents, the loss of grandparents, aunties and uncles who split, and basically just being shown that no matter how good a couple might seem, it's going to end in a heartbreak. And so overcoming that sadness very early on has led you to a very compassionate space right now. The fact that you were able to overcome that through a loving connection in the inner world, through becoming an example of love, kind of like if, if other people aren't going to show you what you want romance to be, you're going to become that. Now the cards in the future we see the Five of Cups as well as the Hermit. Now, don't worry, these cards are not saying that you're destined to be alone and disappointed forever. What they're showing is there will be a setback. What I see coming forward, and of course, only take this if it resonates. I, I don't mean to say this is your guaranteed future. It's just energetically, this is what's coming up. Typically, the cards in the future represent what we expect the future to be at the moment in time when the cards are being read. You have free will in your life. There is no set future outcome that's guaranteed to happen. And when we're aware of what we're moving towards, that empowers us to choose whether to keep going in that direction or to change course and manifest something else entirely. So what the Five of Cups shows is an individual 
lamenting over what has been lost. These could represent three failed relationships. They could represent the loss of one aspect of a relationship, disappointment in something. Since it's in the outer world, it does show a physical world experience, not just a feeling, but a happening. Now, the most important thing about this card to me is that the individual who is looking sad over the loss of these three cups is still blessed by this beautiful rainbow with the beautiful sunrise and these two cups that are like pillars standing with you. And so what it's showing is even in the moments of loss, there will always be blessings. There will always be something new available. And all you have to do is turn around to see what you still have, what's still shining. It's also giving a message to balance your chakras. We see the colors of these butterflies as well as the colors of the rainbow representing the crown, the third eye, the throat, the heart, the solar plexus, the sacral, and the root. And when all of these are here and the card is right side up, it's showing that no matter what other people may come or go from your life, no matter how you might be treated, whereas one moment they're all celebrating you, thinking of you as perfect, in the future, if they start to see sides of you that you were keeping hidden and now everything's not so easy, that doesn't mean that all is lost. There are still the positive sides of yourself, even when shadows come up, even when something needs to be worked through. And what I'm really feeling by these cards is that when you center your happiness and your confidence on your inner space, your magic and your power, Nothing anybody else perceives in you can shake you. If they love you, that's great. But if they turn their back on you, that doesn't mean you have to turn your back on yourself. And so while there might be a challenge coming up in the outer world, the card of the hermit in the inner world is actually a very strong, positive, spiritual card we see this magi standing, surveying beautiful mountain peaks. He's standing in an energy gateway or a portal made of stars. And so this is showing he's not a loner because nobody wants to hang out with him. The hermit card represents somebody who finds their strength in their inner space and their inner connection. The star in this card is something that he's holding up in his own lantern. He's creating it. The owl of wisdom as a constant companion, which means even when you become kind of reclusive and you start communicating more through introspection with your own inner space, even in those moments, you're not totally alone. You will always have spiritual guidance from your higher realm connections. And this will help you and to find the positive in your outer world connections also. Now you may have noticed at the beginning of the reading, I had a heart-shaped card next to your pile of cards. This is showing a message from the Lover's Oracle. And I pre-selected the cards, That's, they're, they're each different. So this is the one that I chose for pile two. And the message on the card is, give thanks for the blessings of love soon to come your way. Know that you deserve to be and have all that your heart truly desires. And so I think this is a beautiful message. In case you had any apprehension from this Five of Cups card in the outer space, that doesn't mean you're doomed for a relationship failure. What's actually showing is that new love is presenting itself and rather than focusing on what you've lost in the past, focus on what's being offered to you because it's something more harmonious, more of a vibrational match to who you are than what you've experienced in the past. Especially coming from a past of heartbreak where now you're kind of coming into your power and realizing what a loving being you actually are. The future is showing 
who you attract is going to be somebody who gets you on a deeper level. And don't worry about what's been lost here. The partnership, the union is going to be something fluid and flowing and spiritually resonant. I'm also going to ask for three messages from the Soul Connections Oracle. What are the messages for the beautiful beings who chose Pile 2? All right, so three vastly different messages for you. Moment, think of a special moment that brought you much joy with your partner. If you're currently single, this could mean think of a moment when you felt really good and connected with somebody in the past and how you want to recreate that or experience it again. The card of illusion saying avoid the trap of mistaking a fantasy for a true soul connection. This could explain why we see the Five of Cups coming up in the future. The goodness that you have within yourself will often project and see goodness in somebody else, even if that individual doesn't feel the reciprocation, doesn't really feel what you're feeling. And so this card is just saying to keep yourself aware of how the other is actually responding rather than painting them with the canvas that you wish they would be. And the telepathic card says, close soul connections are harmoniously synchronized, creating moments of telepathy. So if there's an individual with whom you don't feel a synchronicity or a telepathy, that might not actually be the partner you're meant to be with. You're meant to be with somebody who gets you on a deeper soul level and who can communicate with you in ways beyond language. The last card I'm going to pull for you today is from the Romance Angels Oracle. And we'll see this as the summary card. What is the main message those who chose Pile 2 are meant to take with them today? Honeymoon. Enjoy the bliss of holiday time together. So it looks like the relationship that you are in or that you will be in next is going to lead to some amazing travel time together. I think that's a great note to end this on. I also want to kind of restate that the illusion card doesn't mean that you're in a wrong place with somebody or that you're not meant to be with somebody. It just says more communication is necessary. If you feel like you've built up an idea of what the other person thinks or feels, but you haven't really confirmed that through an open conversation or an honest heart to heart, talk it through, deepen those telepathic skills, Hold on to the best possible moments that you've shared together and trust that you're headed in the right direction. The more communication you bring into the connection, the better. And of course, if you're enjoying the single life, there's no reason you can't go on a lovely solo adventure and enjoy that too. These readings are meant to be the best of both worlds for whatever you might be choosing. And please take only the messages that resonate. These are all very new decks for me. And so it's kind of experimental for me to do a relationship reading. And I don't mean in any way to limit you to just what I've said here. Take what you feel feels right, leave the rest, and let me know in the comments what you thought of today's reading. And if there's an area you'd like for me to focus on for June's pick a pile, whether that's career or creativity, or if you just like the general energy readings, or if you're into 
star seed stuff, let me know in a comment below what you would like to see in an upcoming pick a card. And if you'd like a private reading focused specifically on your life rather than these public readings that might have a lot of messages coming through, some are for you, some are for other viewers, let me do a reading for you. There's a link in the video description to my link tree that includes my Etsy shop where I could do a custom talisman or where you can find the talismans I've shown in today's videos, as well as this fun tassel bracelet I've worn in today's reading that I just made for my shop. There's also a link to my Wizio page where you can book a private reading for yourself. So thank you so much, my lovely pile two, and we'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching and bye for now. And hello to you and welcome to your reading, all my lovelies who chose pile three. Before we get into your messages in the cards, the talisman you chose is this incredible self-healed double terminated Himalayan quartz with some amazing black inclusions. Whenever we see black inclusions in a crystal, they offer some psychic protection energy. And when we see a self-healed crystal specifically, where we see that in the process of its formation, it's been knocked and dinged again, but it's continued to grow and become the perfect, beautiful crystal it was meant to be all along. That shows that even though you've had some setbacks in life, you've had some obstacles, you've been hit, You've always recovered from that and become a stronger version of you. And that doesn't excuse any time you may have been hurt, but it shows that you have overcome all of that. The amethyst on the bottom of the talisman shows that your spirituality is very important to you. Amethyst is a crown chakra gemstone, so when we see it come up or when we're drawn to it, it shows that opening your psychic communication, opening to your higher guidance is very pivotal in your life. Now, before I shuffle the cards specifically for you, I'm going to clear the deck by playing the singing bowl. As I do this, I would like you to focus on your current relationship status. If there's a person you're with, you can think of them. If there's a person you would like to be with, you can think of them and ask their guides to give you some clarity about your connection. And if you choose to remain single, which is also great, set the intention that the messages that come through come through to describe your connection to self. And with that, I set the intention that all the messages that come through me in today's reading for Pile 3 serve the highest good of all those who chose Pile 3 for their reading. Maybe noticing that this is a new deck for my YouTube channel. This is the Star Tarot. I used to read exclusively the Osho Zen, but I felt kind of drawn to explore some of the more traditional tarot decks. And the Star just felt like the right deck for a romance reading. And so we're going to look at the cards on the top and the bottom of the deck. The top of the deck represents your outer world and the bottom represents your inner world. So we have present, past, and future. 
present, past, and future. All right, so pile three, I am so sorry that you're going through some heartbreak right now. If you're not going through heartbreak, you might want to look at the other piles and see if there might be another deck more resonant with you or another message more resonant because what I'm seeing here, the nine of swords in the outer world and the death card in the inner world show that there is a relationship cycle coming to an ending. When we see the nine of swords, the woman here who's sitting in sorrow with nine swords racked above her, it represents the breaking of an illusion that she had created. And whether you're male or female, we read energies, not genders. And so the character on this card represents your outer world self in relation to the hopes and dreams that you would put into a relationship. This may be a breakup. It could even be the loss of somebody through the crossing over into the next phase of their soul's incarnation cycles and leaving you to feel very much alone. And the inner world card of death, it shows again the ending of a cycle that until now has been very strong. But what we see that I feel is very significant in the star tarot that's not always there in the other decks is a phoenix rising from the ashes of what has burnt. And so what this card is showing is in your outer world, there's a very clear ending, but in the inner world, your soul is cognizing the fact that this ending is also creating the space for a new beginning. When we look at the past, I do see that you've had a very beautiful romance in your life. The world card in the outer world, right side up, shows that there was nothing you wanted that you didn't experience. You had a very beautiful connection, a very divine connection, a very loving partnership that may have even included some shared travel, some experiencing of different places and different states. And the inner world card of the lovers shows that you did experience great fulfillment romantically. Now, if it's a divorce or a breakup that you're going through, I want you to really understand that just because this person was the fulfillment of everything you wanted in a romantic partner and now it's ended, that doesn't mean that that individual was your only hope for love or was your only soulmate or your only one true love. Because in the future, and we'll get to that in a moment, I am seeing the possibility to create something absolutely new with somebody who is new to you. But what this shows is that you are going through a time of grieving this loss. If the individual has passed over, the message I'm getting from this very clearly is that you still have unfinished love. It's like you lost them before you were finished loving them. If it's a breakup, what I would suggest you do, and I'm seeing this confirmed by all the smoke or all this haze in this card, what I'd recommend doing is writing a letter and expressing all the feelings that went unspoken, everything you wanted to tell the individual that you didn't get a chance to say, write it down. And if the individual is still alive and you're still able to reach them, you don't have to, but if you feel like there were things you wish you said that you didn't get to say, you can send them that letter. If the individual has passed away and you feel like there was so much left for the two of you to experience together, you can write that list of here's what I wish we had had a chance to do that we didn't get a chance to do. Here's what I wish I had told you write it all down. It might feel very emotional, but it's important for you to release that energy. And you can either leave it at their grave site, you can ceremonially burn it, but make sure you do so in a very safe space. I don't want any risk of fire hazard for you, so I'd suggest doing this 
in a fireplace or in a fire pit, somewhere with proper ventilation, somewhere where it's not likely to actually cause a fire. Maybe in an outdoor space surrounded by concrete, for example, with a bucket of water ready. But release that letter to them in a way that you know they're going to receive it. If you don't like the idea of burning it, you could even speak it out loud because the voice resonance, the power of vocal communication does reach those other realms. This is why prayer work works. This is why chanting can reach through to an Ishta Devata. And so expressing out loud everything that you wish you had told them will be a beautiful way to communicate with your beloved. I would also say, and don't feel guilty about the fact that you do want a future relationship. You don't have to be permanently grieving or permanently mourning. Now what I'm feeling for a lot of you who chose pile three, you don't even want to think about another relationship at this point. You're still holding on to the memory of that individual. You're still going through the process of letting go. And that's perfectly good. That's perfectly valid. Honor your feelings. Honor your energetic space. Don't rush into anything. You definitely don't have to. But if you choose to, what I'm seeing here, the Six of Cups and the Ace of Pentacles, sorry, the Nine of Cups and the Ace of Pentacles, which shows fulfillment in the outer world through emotional self-sovereignty, and it's also showing an honoring for your past. What I'm seeing symbolically in this card, knowing everything that we've just revealed in the past and present, this can be you making a beautiful offering on the waters of life, an offering to your past, an offering to your past connection, an offering to that higher spiritual love that's reaching you in the form of this bird, dropping a little heart into your chalices. The fact that the card was reversed shows that it exists as a possibility. It's not something that you have to do. It's something that you can do. But basically, you have the option to open your heart to love again. And that won't disrespect or take anything away from the love that you had in the past. If anything, it's going to be building on the foundation of the beautiful love that you had. The inner world card of the Ace of Pentacles shows this brand new tree growing from a seed that you have yet to plant. This card was also reversed, so again, it's there as an energetic option, not something guaranteed. I feel like the most important thing right now is to heal, to love and trust yourself, to rise from those ashes it's like you feel like part of yourself died along with the loss of this love, along with the loss of that romance. It's like a part of your heart was there with the other person. And if the relationship failed and it's a breakup or it's a divorce, you are mourning the part of yourself that identified as part of that couple. And if the person physically passed away, and I'm so sorry, I'm so, either way, I'm so sorry for what you're going through. I know this is a tough time. I know this is a painful time for you, especially because you felt such a close oneness with that other person that it feels like they literally were like you in another form and you're letting that go. But the Phoenix in the death card is showing that you are something more than what you've believed yourself to be up until now. And you will love again, and you will grow strong again, and you will overcome this difficulty. As impossible as that may feel, the fact that it's right side up means you are already rising and becoming something stronger. The card that I selected from the Lover's Oracle, look at how beautiful the imagery is mirrored between the Nine of Cups and this Oracle card. And twin flames, your passion ignites. So what this card is showing is that you did have a very strong twin flame connection, either with this individual from the past or with somebody who you have yet to connect with in the future. 
I'll let you decide on that, how it resonates with you. This could be different because we're doing a group reading here. I know that the messages are very specific and won't resonate with everyone who chose this specific pile, but it does show that you are here in this lifetime to experience a very deep soul level connection. I'm going to look at three cards from the Soul Connections Oracle as well. Wow, so these cards are showing whether you're ready to think about this now or if you'd rather just kind of be aware of it and then set it on the back burner for a future possibility, you definitely do have the power to romance, to create a new romance or to experience another love as deep as the love that you felt in the past. The power of love is like a magnet drawing souls together. So you were drawn together with somebody in your past on a deep level. The power of love within you still exists as strongly as it did when you created that connection. And so you are able to draw in another romance just as clearly. Be open to accept divine guidance in your relationships. And a marriage of souls is a union of two divine counterparts blending together. So you do have this available in your future, just as you had it available in your past. And I feel like this openness to divine guidance, that's part of your key to the healing that you're going through right now. The last card I'm going to pull for pile three comes from the Romance Angels Oracle. And give your relationship a chance. Work on your partnership. So that means you don't have to give up on the possibility of experiencing that love again. You may choose to experience that love in a new way or in a different way. And if you so choose to, it's available. So there we have it. That is the romance reading for today. I hope you took some comfort in it. Again, if you're not experiencing a loss, if you didn't just end a major long-term relationship or lose a partner, you may want to look at the other talismans and pick another pile. It does happen sometimes that there might even be messages for us in multiple piles. So take it how it resonates. I hope this was helpful for you in some way. So much love to you and we'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.